Hi. So, um, as you said, I'm Sarah. I've been working with uh, Miss F uh, Professor Fondes back there. Say hi. Um, <laughs> and we went looking. Uh, I did for research and writing last semester. I wrote a piece about John Smith that kind of transitioned into the starving time. And um, so this is Jane. <coughs> Everyone say hi, Jane. Hi, Jane. Um, uh, Jane is a 15-year-old colonist to the New World. She came looking for adventure and life experience and all sorts of things. Anything a 15-year-old wants out of a New World, that's what she was looking for. Her, li her um, imagination was her limits. Uh, Preservation Virginia found Jane, as you see here, among pots. From, uh, uh, from the time of the starving time in a basement cellar during a 2010 uh, excavation. Um, this 3D rendering is uh, what they found when they took the shards of her skull and put, put them back together. Um, you can see markings that I've blown up here that um, were really curious to the scientists. They, they looked a lot similar to the domesticated dog bones that they had found that had been cannibalized by the colonists during the starving time. And uh, many people say that you can't cannibalize a dog because you're a human, but these were domesticated animals. So it was like one of their family members. Um, and the question that was brought up, would, would, could Jane have fallen victim to the same cannibalistic colony? So. Uh, to answer this question, let's take a quick look back at um, the years leading up to uh, the starving time. Uh, to start, co uh, co countries had become very prosperous in the New World, and uh, the English crown wanted their, their cut of the pie. So the Virginia Company was a, co a company in uh, England that sent 104 men to Jamestown uh, they used the Roanoke Colony maps for directions, the lost colony of Roanoke. Um, and John Smith was appointed as one of the five men to lead the colony um, through the harsh winters of Jamestown. Uh, a little bit about uh, John Smith. Uh, Smith was born to a middle class family, which was in essence uh, a land owning farmer uh, family. Uh, he joined the military when he was old enough to, uh, to join versus going to college. Um, unfortunately, he was also a proud and boastful and pious man, and that didn't bode well with a lot of the gentlemen in the colony. Uh, this actually brought him to his first incident in the colony, where he was brought in chains to the New World. He was accused of treason by the gentlemen on the ship uh, under Captain uh, Newport on his way to the colony. Um, Thankful for him, he was on a pre-appointed list of leaders that the Virginia Colony had written and sealed in a box and just sent along the ship with them. So even though he was accused of treason, he still got to become a leader, which of course was the last thing the gentleman wanted because he was getting a leader over the gentleman and he was not born a gentleman. Uh, during the first winter, the colonists, the colonists realized how bad they were going to, how bad it was going to be. And after the first winter, there was only one remaining leader of the pre-appointed five, and it was John Smith. Um, after this, he proclaimed that he was going to be president of Jamestown, and he realized that the natives were here for decades, and he needed them for help. So he started trade with the Indians for both food and materials, but also for survival tips. They had survived. How could he have the colonists in his colony under the crown of England to survive? Um, he also put laws in place. Uh, one of the most known laws was if you're not going to work, you're not going to eat. That meant that not only gentlemen and uh, uh, commoners were going to work alike, but if you wanted to put food on your table and survive, you had to work. Unfortunately, Smith sustained a suspicious, suspicious gunpowder incident that forced him to return back to England. Uh, this left uh, the Virginia Company to place John Smith's biggest rival as a temporary uh, president. George Percy was going to be this temporary president. Uh, 
As mentioned, he was the biggest rival of Smith. Uh, part of this was because uh, Percy was born to an upper class family who had also chosen military over a, a college degree. Um, although Percy had a small secret. Uh, his name had been spoiled uh, by the actions of his relatives. Uh, Percy's uncle had been part of the gunpowder plot, which was a failed assassination of the parliament and uh, the king uh, by a group of Catholics. Uh, this led to him being uh, imprisoned in the Tower of London and subsequently uh, put to death. Um, his father had also been put into the Tower of London and he committed suicide before anything could become, uh, could come of that. Uh, this left Percy with a little chip on his shoulder and need to prove himself, his worth, and to restore honor to his name. Uh, Percy and a lot of the other gentlemen lobbied for Smith's resignation. Um, but again, the suspicious incident with gunpowder forced Smith back to England, which solved that problem. Uh, Percy's other two orders of business were to no longer force gentlemen to work in the fields. They didn't want to work. Why force them? Uh, the other thing he did was he cut off all trade with the Indians. This was not a good thing. Um, he viewed anybody other than gentlemen as less human. It was an inferior quality of them to be not born into nobility. Uh, Due to the hatred that uh, Percy had for the lower class and for um, the natives, this led the colony into a downward spiral that ultimately started the starving time of, 19, of 1609. Uh, to start off things, Thomas Gates was sent with nine ships to replace Percy as president. As I said, he was only a temporary president. Um, Gates. And the nine ships, due to poor planning, were caught in hurricane season. They left in June. So most of the nine ships were shipwrecked in Bermuda. Uh, this left a few ships to make it to Jamestown. However, they were the ships without the leaders, without the supplies, and no hope of survival. Um, it left. <laughs> It left the colony with only more mouths to feed and in an even worse position than they had been previously. Uh, as a kind of comparison, they ate through three acres of corn in a week. That was all of their food. Um, with no supplies, it forced them to venture out, but with the tensions and the native from the natives due to no trade, they actually had uh, encircled the palisades of Jamestown and anybody who had ventured out for food would have been killed. Um, there was also a little island that they called Hog Island. Very easy. There were hogs living on the island, which was the prim primary source of the colonists' protein. This, uh, the Powhatan, the, the Indian chief, sent his tribesmen to kill off all of the hogs. That, and then there was a migration of fish. The sturgeon was the fish in the area. They had migrated away from the brackish waters of Jamestown towards fresh water uh, over in Richmond. And then there was a drought. They did tree ring research um, around the area of Jamestown that found this was the peak of a drought during the starving time. Uh, so it left more mouths to feed and no way of feeding them. This brings us back to Jane. Um, there had been, uh, Jane was one of the colonists as part of the voyage that had headed by Gates. Um, they did, um, sorry, they reconstructed her, this was from Jamestown, I went to Jamestown, this was part of her skull that was found and then a part of her tibia. Uh, they were actually found months apart and it wasn't until they found the majority of the skull that they put it together, it was the same person. Uh, she was sent uh, from, uh, from Jamestown to here, to the National History Museum, and the forensic anthropologists did an isotope analysis on Jane. Uh, they took carbon, nitrogen, and uh, phosphorus atoms and determined that Jane had a mostly wheat diet. Who has wheat diet? Europe. So she had just been located early enough 
that she hadn't been able to change her system to where her majority of food was corn. She also went, uh, they also found out that her pro she had a lot of protein in her diet. This, this said a little bit of nobility. However, most of the silverware that nobility used was made out of, uh, sorry, <laughs> was made out of uh, lead and they didn't, she didn't have any lead in her system. So there was no way that she could, so they found that Jane was a 14 to 15 year old female that had been brought over recently from Europe and was a servant in a wealthy family's home. Uh, there had been several accounts of cannibalism by many different people, but until Jane was found, they hadn't had anything to corroborate. Uh, Smith actually said that, so great was our famine that, that a salvage we stew and buried the poorer sort took up ag again and eat him. And so did divers one another, boiled and stewed with roots. And what, so that was basically saying they dug up their dead and ate them. And then he went on to say that one amongst the rest did kill his wife, powdered her, and had eaten part of her before it was known, before the colony had figured it out. And uh, Percy only said, this was like the politician in him, that said nothing was spared to maintain life. So this is a jawbone of a dog. And you see cuts here that are very similar to the jawbone of Jane. They're down here. And um, the only difference that they could see was there were more tentative marks on Jane's <coughs> jawbone than there were on the dog's, the dog's bone. But it was basically a filleting of the, the jaw to get the, the skin and flesh off. Um, next we see up here. They're also here. Um, was a hatchet type of motion where they tried to open the cranial vault. Uh, it was a failed attempt because it's not broken. Um, the next one you see over in the corner was on the um, uh, occipital something in the back. It was the back of the head where they were trying to open the cranial vault. And eventually they did. There was a up the fissure of the, the back of the head. Um, they actually opened it up and it split all the way up. This was the tibia. What you saw with a lot of the animals, they couldn't find any for me when I talked to Jamestown, but um, they would hit them as hard as they could to get as far through the bone as they could and then just break it the rest of the way so that it, they got through to here and then just broke it in order to get the insides of the bone. Uh, Last, we have Thomas Gates. He eventually managed to create a new ship from the, the wreckage that was the not, uh, five ships that wrecked. Um, he made it to Jamestown, and one of, two of his major accomplishments as a leader was he reestablished trade with the natives, which made a world of difference. And he uh, w moved uh, Jamestown closer to Richmond. Also helped. You're back with uh, fresh water where you can have fish, there's more uh, uh, livestock, there's everything. Um, he also moved where there was better land and uh, John Rolfe, who was with Thomas Gates, could start the tobacco. Uh, more of Thomas Gates. Uh, in conclusion, the uh, while it's uncertain of whether or not Jane was the wife that Smith had talked about, that her husband actually killed to survive, uh, there was actually a woman in uh, Mary Washington who claimed that the starving time never actually happened and survival cannibalism didn't exist um, until Jane was found and it changed everything. So, questions? Thank you.